Hello friends, Dennis here, developer advocate at HubSpot. If you haven't already seen, at the end of November, we are sunsetting support for the HubSpot API key, popularly known as the happy key, and it will be replaced with private apps. Private apps provide a much secure method of authenticating with your portal, and they are pretty easy to get started using. In this video, Robert Ainsley, manager on our solutions architecture team, gives us a couple examples of how easy the process is. The first example shows you how to use the private app with the popular API platform Postman. And the second example, we're going to walk through how to set it up with a custom coded action. I'll leave some useful developer doc links in the description below. And as always, if you like this content, go ahead and do the old like and subscribe. Okay, let's go. In the coming months, HubSpot is going to be retiring API key as means of authentication for the HubSpot API. This will be replaced with private apps. Both of these items are ways to authenticate your API calls, but the benefit of private apps is that for a single portal, you can have multiple access tokens that are specifically scoped to only certain behaviors. So they have an inherent layer of increased security. So with an API key, you only have one global key for the account, and uh, that leads to circumstances where you may have a difficult time tracking where an individual call is coming from if you have multiple apps that are using that key. And if you need to invalidate that key, you invalidate the key everywhere. So I wanted to provide a quick overview of what this change really looks like in practice and an example of one or two places that might need to change and how you might change that. This change is talked about in this developer announcement. So as a starting point, we will look at making an API call, API call using the existing method of using an API key. API keys are accessible in your HubSpot portal under the settings, under integrations, an API key. When you have the, this value available, it is included as a query parameter in a HTTP URL. And in Postman, I am using an environment variable so you're not seeing the API key, but in the background, that value will be swapped out for the current key. I can make a call and I get a response. Now, in the new world of using private apps in HubSpot, we'll go through the change that needs to happen. So first we need to create a private app. I've done that under the private app section. I'm gonna create a private app. I give it a name so that we know where this, uh, the source of this API call surfaced in other parts of the HubSpot tool. Then we declare certain scopes I am going to utilize the just contacts, write and read for this particular app, and I will create it. Now this token is, will be used as a authorization bearer token. I'm going to show this token and copy it and then in the future, I'll cancel this and get rid of it since I'm showing everyone in this video what this key is. Remember, this is a secret key that should be safe. So I copy it and then over in my place where I'm making my API calls, I will add an authorization header, a bearer token, and I'm going to create a new environment variable for this actually. So let's go over to this and I will paste in my private app token. Save that. Now I go back to my call and I'll be able to select that token in the background. This token will be that call and I'll remove the query parameter that has API key. Click send, and I get the exact same response now that my call is authorized using this new token. One other place or example of uh, how you might 
make this change is that uh, if you're using, say, the HubSpot node API client, you extend, when you instantiate the client, you can pass in your API key. And instead of passing in API key, you pass in access token. In this uh, custom workflow uh, coded action, I'm going to add a new secret here. And then I'll call this token. I'll put my value in again. And then I would use process.env dot private at token. I would remove my old API key and save. And that's all we need to do. We've updated the authentication from our API key to our private app token.